Houses in DC are from an era often a bit older than the rest of the country. We have houses that were built in the 1800s all the way up into the 1960s. So when a home that has been freshly renovated comes on the market, it's often very popular. Now all renovations are not created equal. And there are a few things that I look for in a new renovation to determine whether or not this may be a good quality reno or maybe it's not. The first thing I notice is the thresholds. These are the transitions from one type of flooring material to another, say tile of a bathroom next to wood floors of a hallway or the bedroom. If the contractor has gone to the trouble to really work on the subfloor, leveling it out, then these two materials will butt together. There won't be a piece that kind of runs between them, whether it's marble to match the tile or a, uh, a little raised piece that's made out of the wood flooring material. They hit each other, it's nice and tight and it's very clean, there's no trip hazard whatsoever. That tells me that the contractor went to the trouble to reinforce or strengthen the subfloor of that home. The second thing I look for is the floating fridge. I don't know if you've ever seen one of these, but you can walk into a renovated kitchen and there's cabinetry along two walls, and then you look in the corner and the fridge is just sitting there all alone. It's, it's like, oh, wait, we forgot the fridge. Let's just, oh, just put it in the corner. It'll be all right. Just put it in the corner. It's Don't ever do that again. It's very odd. The other thing about the fridge that you want to notice is if it sits proud of the cabinetry. All the good contractors order counter depth refrigerators. They sit flush with the cabinets because they are the same depth. When you walk in and you see that that fridge is sitting proud of the rest of the cabinetry, I often think mm, somebody didn't plan well or maybe they had to order a fridge at the last minute. Whatever the reason, it, it just shouldn't happen. Counter depth refrigerators are readily available in any market. The third thing I notice in a new renovation are interferences. This could be a kitchen drawer that doesn't open all the way or often you'll see it in <laughs> back to the refrigerator. A refrigerator door that only partially opens because it's hitting maybe the opposite counter or um, something next to it. Sometimes it's a countertop that, you know, the fridge has been not planned well, so it's kind of shoved in or it hits maybe a, a, a wall on the opposite side. They didn't take the time to think about the swing radius of the refrigerator doors and as a result the refrigerator doesn't open correctly. The other thing I see, and it's it's difficult in these older houses because our, our kitchens can end up being very narrow, is when you have to stand on the side of the oven to open the oven completely. I mean, can you imagine? standing on the side of your oven with the door open because there's no room between the opposing cabinets and the oven door and trying to take out your Thanksgiving turkey, it's, it's difficult. I understand that sometimes that's unavoidable, but it does kind of indicate to me that maybe the planning wasn't exactly where it should have been. Don't ever do that again. The next thing I notice are odd soffits or boxed in, uh, I don't know how to describe it. You usually see them in the corners of ceilings. And what it is, is there's a plumbing elbow. So trades come in in a certain order. They the HVAC guy comes in first. He's got the biggest, bulkiest stuff. He's got to run his lines or her lines and um, he needs the room to do that. So though that trade comes in first and then the plumber comes in and the plumber kind of has to work around what the HVAC person did. And sometimes you'll end up with an elbow that's kind of poking out into the room. And what happens is the, 
the finished contractor will kind of box it in. So you'll see this little tiny box um, shoved up in the corner. Um, no! Some, sometimes it's unavoidable and sometimes it can be hidden by crown molding. But whenever I see that, I always think, mm, yeah, the, the plumber didn't, somebody wasn't talking to the other trade and um, something had to be done. So I don't particularly like to see those in a new renovation. Again, these houses are old and some things are unavoidable. Another thing I notice is bad carpentry, like trim molding. Maybe the, the miters, the, um, the corner joints aren't super tight or it's a little bit wonky. You'll know it when you see it. But it just kind of says that maybe the, they used a carpenter who wasn't as experienced and then you kind of wonder, well, what else was the carpenter doing that or maybe they hired somebody for plumbing electrical that was not really up to a decent standard. So whenever I see trim work, things that are, you know, readily visible and it's not great, I always wonder what's going on behind the walls that is potentially not so great. The last thing I always recommend clients do is look at the permit history. In the district, they're now showing photos and permit history of the renovation of the home. And it's very easy to look up. You can do it by the address. And you can see photos of the work in progress. Like if you see a PVC pipe and your disclosures say it's copper, then you might want your agent to have that conversation with the listing agent and find out what's going on, that's not good. But you can see how many stop works they had, what they pulled permits for, um, if the bathroom is brand new and, and there's no plumbing permit, that can be a bit of a red flag. So I always recommend to my clients that they pull up the address and they look through the permits. Always, always, always hire a good inspector. These are things that happen they happen to new renovators there could be something about the house that um, there were some constraints that had some of these things result in the final product not recommending avoiding the purchase of the house just just go in knowing that some of these things um, may indicate that the renovation is not as tight as you'd like it to be if you have questions about DC real estate, my name is Carol Kennedy. Thanks for watching.